Matthew Stafford's return to Detroit is proving to be controversial. However, though, it's taking an unexpected turn. We're going to talk about it in today's episode, folks, so stay tuned. We used to be a team no one respected. We used to be a team no one feared. That was then. This is now. First victory of the year on the line. Goff's got it. Back, looks, throws, end zone. Yes! Caught! You know who we are. Ten, yes! five, end zone! Touchdown, Detroit Lions! And you know where to find us. We won't be far. We'll be on your front porch waiting for you. We are the New Era Lions. And we are driven by Detroit. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to yet another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. I'm your host, David T. Pike, and we're diving in right now. But before we dive in, I just want to say to all my loyal subscribers and viewers that are coming back, thank you all for coming back. Thank you all for your view, your support, your patronage. It means the world to me that I have such loyal subscribers and fans, and I'm thankful for each and every one of you. And to those that are tuning into my show for the very first time, I just want to say thank you all for giving my show a shot. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content, but even more so, I hope to gain you all subscribers if I have not done so already. And with that, to everybody, I just want to say God bless. I hope you all enjoy the show. And with that... Let's dive into the content. So, here's the thing, folks. <clears throat> this upcoming game we've got against the LA Rams for our first home playoff game in 30 years. It's featuring an old friend of sorts, Matthew Stafford. Now, we know quite a lot as Lions fans about Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford, for Lions fans, is a guy that is still immensely popular here in the city of Detroit. He is still immensely popular for a lot of people who are associated with Detroit sports media. However, though, just because he is popular does not necessarily mean that he is not a polarizing figure or character all at the same time. Because we have to think about this here. When you think about Matthew Stafford, there are some Lions fans that absolutely loved him because of the fact that he would play through injuries, he was very physically tough, and he had a never-say-die when it came to his playing performances for the Lions. It was like, listen, uh, if he could be out on the field playing, he was going to do it. There was very, very little that was going to keep him off the field, like literally there were times he was playing with multiple injuries, had broken bones, he had sprained sprained or strained ligaments. I mean, it was just ridiculous what the man went through to try and play for us. And so that right there definitely endured him to a, endeared him, pardon me, to a lot of Lions fans. And it endeared, it endeared him to a lot of fans in general just for his sheer toughness and his ability to endure a lot of pain just because he wanted to make sure he was out there playing for us every Sunday. Now, that's one side of this. The other side of it, though, is that there are still others in Detroit that don't have as much love for him, or maybe even no love at all, because of the fact that Stafford was never able to win for the Detroit Lions in games where it truly mattered the most. Now, yes, I do know Stafford won a lot of games for us in the fourth quarter in comebacks, and that definitely does you know, kind of fly in the face of what I'm saying here. But I'm not talking about those games. I'm talking about the games where it truly, truly, truly mattered for a lot of these types of Lions fans where it was like, listen, because of these types of failures, it really did not sit well with some Lions fans. And I'm talking about all the playoff games that we've had because there were three times that Stafford got us to the playoffs. We lost all three of them. Then there was the Week 17 matchup in 2014 against the Packers when the Lions had that chance to win their first division crown. So again, there are games in the past where some Lions fans have really held that against Stafford because it's like, listen, those were your opportunities to potentially get those things that we were looking for as Lions fans. So that way, you know, it would kind of endear him a little bit more to said such fans, but it is what it is. However, regardless of that, many Lions fans, former organization members, teammates, whoever you'd like to talk about, would largely agree, like I said, that Stafford is still a hugely popular person in the Motor City. He's still a hugely popular figure for the Lions. It's just part of what happens with, with what's going on. You're going to have people that love you. You're going to have people that don't love you. That's just kind of the nature of sports. It's kind of the nature of fandom. 
However, though, Matthew Stafford aside, <laughs> as polarizing as he might be, Matthew has his wife, Kelly, who is definitely making news right now for all of what's going on in this conversation because one thing we definitely know about Kelly Stafford is that she is a very strongly opinionated person and she definitely is going to defend her husband, especially when it comes to sports, when it comes to social media, because she is a hugely, she's a hugely popular podcaster. So again, she's got a platform, so she's going to use it. And what I'm referring to here is that Kelly Stafford found out that there was a proposed kind of like fake jersey ban where there was a fan or somebody who decided to propose that Matthew Stafford's jersey was to be banned from coming to the playoff game at Ford Field when Stafford and the Rams come to town. And that really has kind of sparked this whole thing that we're going to talk about in today's episode. So again, what is this whole thing? Well, the idea is that, again, and this is not official at all, this has nothing to do with the Detroit Lions. The Lions did not push this out. The Lions were not endorsing this. This was a fan that kind of pushed it out on social media, and social media kind of did the rest of it, took it from there. And pretty much what it was done, it was brought to life for, I would say, a variety of factors, because there are a couple of things that are kind of feeding into this whole process that are kind of, you know, fueling why this idea kind of got where it's at. The first real reason is because of, <laughs> oh boy, what happened in 2021. And anybody who knows exactly what I'm referring to is, it's the Detroit Rams fandom nonsense. And I mean, let's just be fair and honest here. Everybody knows exactly what I'm referring to as soon as I say Detroit Rams. Because go back to 2021, the Lions had just finished their season 313-1, and and Matthew Stafford and the Rams looked like they were primed for a Super Bowl run. They were one of the best teams in the league that year. They had a lot of potential uh, to get to that Super Bowl. They had a lot of star power, such as Von Miller, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, OBJ. They had a lot of guys on that team that looked like they were primed to make that Super Bowl run. And so for a lot of Lions fans, it was like, hey, we don't have anything else to root for as far as the Lions because, well, they're not going to the playoffs. Let's root for our quarterback that was just on the team last year that now has that chance to go out and get that Super Bowl that he was looking for when he asked for the trade. Because again, most people don't seem to remember this, but I keep putting it out there for a reason. Stafford was the one who asked for the trade out of Detroit because he wanted to go to an organization to win. That was a specifically what Stafford stated. He wanted to go somewhere so that way he had a chance to win. He didn't want to go through another rebuild, which I can't fault Stafford for that, but these are facts that are highly important when you're having these kinds of conversations. So that is part and parcel where this is coming from because when those Detroit Rams fans came out, it was like as if our, our fan base had completely split in two. There were some that were like, okay, yes, we want to wish Stafford well, but it's like, listen, we're not all of a sudden going to become Rams fans just because Stafford is going to the Super Bowl. It's like, listen, we're wishing Stafford well. It's not like we're all of a sudden just going to become diehard Rams fans. So that's where part of this is coming from. But also, this also is coming from just from the practicality standpoint that I talked about. Stafford, as I stated, is still a very highly, largely popular person in Detroit. But let's again be fair and be practical and state facts for what they are. He's not part of the team. So it's like, listen, you are a Detroit Lions fan. Are you or are you not? Okay, yes. That takes priority of whoever player is coming to town on an opposing team. It's like, listen, you are a Lions fan first, then you are a specific player fan second. And then that goes into the third point here. When you're talking about quarterbacks here, obviously the whole narrative with this game for the Rams versus the Lions is Goff versus Stafford. So really it comes down to a matter of a question. Do you support the current quarterback in Jared Goff who actually got you to the dance? Or are you going to, pardon me, are you going to try to be nice because Stafford is coming to town? because of the fact that he was here for 12 years and his first trip back to Ford Field actually to play. I know that they, I know that Stafford has come back to Detroit after all this, but this is his first time coming back to Ford Field as a player to play. So it's like, listen, it's like all of this stuff is kind of, kind of mixing into this little concoction. And it's like, listen, for Lions fans, it's like, listen, 
hey, you know what? We're glad that what Stafford did, but it's like, listen, he's coming in. He's coming in as an enemy. And it's not like we have anything personal with him, but it's like, listen, I'm not going to give him any safe harbor while he's coming in trying to beat my team. That's just that's just the nature of the business. And that, again, kind of goes back to, that kind of leads us into the second part of this whole thing because you have to ask yourself the question here. What did Kelly Stafford specifically say that's kind of sparked this whole thing? Well, specifically what she said, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put up the social media post that she put up here in a screenshot. Specifically what she was saying is that she thought it was sad that this idea was getting pu pulled around because she was like, listen, this idea, this notion, this kind of sentiment that's coming from this proposed idea is the complete opposite of how she and Matthew feel about the city, which is like, okay, I kind of can, I can understand that. It's disappointing because, hey, you know what? She's looking at the fact that, hey, an idea has been presented and that to her, it's kind of insulting because it's a travesty to how she and Matthew feel about the city of Detroit and how they feel about the organization of the Lions. But to me, this is kind of a bit of a gross overreaction. And to me, this is kind of what Kelly does a little bit. And again, I'm not trying to speak ill of her, but it's like, listen, there have been times in the past where Kelly Stafford has gotten on social media and has said some controversial things that do spark pretty big reactions from people. Because you have to think about it. The first couple of issues I have with this display on social media and what she is trying to say is this. Let's first and foremost understand who Kelly Stafford is in relation to this whole kind of organizational picture of the Lions. Kelly Stafford and Matthew Stafford were a long time part of the Detroit culture, so she knows how die hard and how extremely fanatical Lions fans are. And she also knows the fact that for a playoff game, that is a huge ordeal for Lions fans. So that's just a regular playoff game. Now we're talking about a home playoff game, something that's not happened in Detroit in 30 years. We're talking about a division crown, something that's not happened in 30 plus years. So it's like, let me ask you this question, like sincerely. Did you honestly think that just because Matthew Stafford was here for 12 years, that he was going to get some sort of preferential treatment or the red carpet rollout? That's not going to happen. It's like, listen... As much as we love Matthew Stafford, as much as we love what he's done for the city of Detroit, as much as we love what you as a couple have done for the city of Detroit, it's like, listen, just because of what you did here while you were here in Detroit is not going to change the fact that you're still our opponent coming into our house to try and knock us off of our platform for our first big season in a long, long time. So that means you don't, you don't, you're not going to get any preferential treatment from the Lions fans. You're not going to get any sort of safe harbor. So there's that potential, there's that issue right there. Then you got to think about it from this potential area as well. Think about it here. I've said it before in several episodes already talking about this, but this playoff game, while it definitely has a deep, deep personal undertone because of the fact, again, Jared Goff playing against his former team, his former head coach in Sean McVay and the Rams. And then you got Matthew Stafford returning for his first time to Detroit to play the Detroit Lions in their first home playoff game in 30 years, something that Stafford could not do while he was here. There's a lot of personal undertones there. But let's be fair and honest here. This is, despite all that personal stuff that's there, this is a purely business trip. It's a strictly business situation here because you got to think about it. Lions fans want the playoff win regardless of what she or her husband Matthew has done for the city or done for the Lions in their time past. Again, it, it, we're grateful for what they did. We are still grateful for how they were when they were here with us, but that has no bearance on a competitive outing. It's like, listen, Personnel stuff aside, once that ball snaps, ain't nobody going to be caring about the last 12, the, the, the 12 years that you spent here. Ain't nobody going to care. It's like, listen, you're wearing the opposite uniform that my team is wearing. I'm going to root for the opposite team to stop you and stop you by almost any means necessary, opposite of hurting you. It's like, listen, don't hurt the guy, but stop him from making plays. So again, that to me is one of those situations where it's like, you know, you kind of just got to look at it and just say, hey, I understand why you're saying what you're saying, but it's like, listen, this is a competitive game. It's in the playoffs. This is almost a no-holds-bar kind of situation. 
And again, I'm going to keep stating this for the facts of what it is. This is not official. This has nothing to do with the Detroit Lions. This is something about how some fan decided to propose this, probably in jest, probably to kind of just point out something that, hey, we still have a lot of Stafford fans here, or to kind of point out a point that it's like, listen, just because Stafford was here for a long time, don't just give him like kind of like a, a warm greeting here. Don't necessarily be rude to him. But at the same time, you don't want to just be like, oh, yeah, you know what? Because you were here for 12 years, we're going to give you preferential treatment. It's like, no. All this whole thing is, is that I think there's just too much stock from Kelly in this whole sort of nonsense here. But then that brings us to the third reason about why I think this is a little bit of an overreaction. I think social media has kind of blown this a little out of proportion. Is that, let me ask this question, and let me point this out there. There was another post that Kelly Stafford had about mm, two, three weeks ago, where she specifically stated that if she and her team and her husband are not playing the Lions, that they're going to root for us. They're going to root for the Lions to do well. But she said that unless they're playing us, we're going to not root for them. So pretty much what she's saying is, oh, if you're not playing us, we're, we're going to root for you. But as soon as you play for us, that goes out the door. Well, wait a minute here. Is that or is that not kind of the same kind of dynamic that's going on here? It's just kind of being done in a little bit more of a dramatic display with this whole idea of banning of banning uh, Matthew Stafford's jersey in his first return to Ford Field as a player. Th that, that to me is kind of like, okay, you're kind of playing a double standard. You're kind of playing a hypocritical note there because it's like, listen... You yourself said two weeks ago that, hey, if we're not playing you, we're going to root for you. But if we are going to play for you, then, oh, we're not going to root for you because it's a game. You're the opponent. We want to win. So it's like, well, if you understand that narrative, then how can't you understand this one? Because for me, again, this has nothing to do with personal feelings. It's a strictly business transaction. It's like, listen, before kickoff, we can be all happy, love, joy, joy, sing kumbaya all day long. Same thing after the game is over. But for those three or four hours when it's game time, I don't want to hear nothing about how, oh, well, Matthew Stafford did this for us. Matthew Stafford was this, that, and the other. It's like, no, Matthew Stafford is part of the LA Rams. He is our opponent. He is the enemy in the sense that he is trying to come into Detroit and he's trying to stop the Lions' playoff ambitions. So it's like, listen, for those three to four hours that he's on the opposite sideline and he's playing against us, I don't want to hear nothing about how Matthew Stafford did anything for us. It's like, listen, he's over there. He's not over here. That's all it comes down to. Again, strictly business. No personal feelings attached, at least for that period of time while we're playing the game. Before and after, we can talk about all that other stuff because that's when it's relevant. But when you're playing the game, it has absolutely no bearings. So that's why I think that, one, I think that this whole idea about the jersey, the, the, the jersey ban is just silly to me. Because, like, listen, people are still going to show up to Ford Field. They're probably going to have staff, they're going to probably have Stafford's jersey on. But it's like, listen, okay, they decide to wear Stafford's jersey. So what? There's a lot of other guys on this team now that you can decide to wear jerseys for. You can wear Goff's jersey. You can wear St. Brown's jersey. You can wear Demo's. Uh, uh, Montgomery's is another way to put it. Uh, Jameer Gibbs. Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, Brian Branch. I mean, there's a lot of other guys that you can wear jerseys for. It's like, listen, I don't give a damn whose jersey you wear. It's just so long as you root for the Lions if you're a part of the home crowd. That's all I care about. If you want to reminisce in Matthew Stafford's time, great. But still just be a fan of the Lions and don't then decide to say, oh, well, I'm going to try and give Stafford preferential treatment while I'm here. That I will have a problem with because it's like, listen, regardless, like I said, of what Stafford did for us back in the day, it's like, listen, he's coming in as the enemy. He's coming in as the opponent. Again, you can do anything you want to him. Scream at him, jeer at him, do whatever you want to so long as it's not illegal. And it's like, listen, if you don't want to wear Stafford's jersey, that's personally on you. But it's like, listen, this is not an officially sanctioned thing from the Detroit Lions, this proposed jersey ban of Stafford's jersey at Ford Field. This is some fan that thought it up, decided to try and make a point of it, and then Kelly got a hold of it and kind of got a little upset about it. So to me, it's like, listen, I think this is kind of an overblown reaction. I think it's kind of silly. But at the same time, to kind of bring this into the relevant situation that it is, it shows once again just how competitive, how fanatical, how diehard some Lions fans really, really are. I'm about as diehard as it gets, but it's like, listen, this is not something that I would have ever proposed because it's kind of just a silly notion in my opinion. But again, that's the news of the day. So just, just kind of point it out there for what it is. But anyway, 
Having all said that, I think this is a good place to stop this episode, so I just want to say thank you all for watching in another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. If you like what you saw, by all means, I highly encourage you all to watch the next episode that I got coming out at the end of this one. I also encourage you all, please, to do one of these three things. Like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If by chance you've, you've subscribed in the past, you forgot to do so at the time, or you just subscribed and you not had a chance to do so, again, I want to highly encourage you all to please subscribe to the channel. But also, if you subscribed and you forgot to do so, please make sure you turn on that bell notification icon as well so that way you never miss any more content that I'm pushing out. Again, subscription numbers are always going up but we want to make sure you turn on that notification icon so that way as soon as something comes in you guys can come back into the show and we can keep having great discussions about football related items especially if they're related to the Lions. To help in that endeavor, I also ask for you to please share this content with your Lions friends and family members. Share it here on YouTube, share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook, share it anywhere and everywhere you can with everybody and anybody that you can. Again, the more we share it, the better the channel spreads, the better it has a chance to grow. And with that being said, folks, I again just want to say thank you all for watching the content. Thank you all for your view. It absolutely helps me out, and I'm ever so thankful. I'm also thankful if I just gained you as a subscriber. Welcome to the MCM family. If I still haven't gained you as a subscriber, hopefully you could come back, and I'll get another chance to do so. But until that time, I just want to say God bless, and until the next time we meet, I'll see you all in the next episode.